Hello, everyone. We're here at the University of New South Wales, and I'm Norman Wahlberger. So when we're working with complex numbers, it's often useful for us to keep in mind a picture or a diagram of the complex plane, where things are. So here I've shown you a quick diagram of the complex plane. Maybe we could put a C here, showing the real axis, which is the usual number line, and the imaginary axis, which has multiples of i labeled. And then the two complex numbers that we're interested in, 2 plus 3i, which is z, is going to be here. 2 and 3i are its components. There it is there. And w is minus 1 plus 2i. So it's minus 1 in that direction plus 2i. There it is there. Okay. So often we think about these complex numbers as being points. And sometimes we like to think of them as being vectors. It's another way of thinking about what a complex number is. OK, so when we calculate 3z, well, we expect to get a point which is in that direction, but three times as far away. And when we calculate z squared and these other combinations, they have some geometrical uh, significance in terms of the, the plane. OK, so let's start by making some uh, calculations. Perhaps we can start with uh, up here. 3z. All right, so z is equal to 2 plus 3i, so if we multiply that by 3, we're just going to get 6 plus 9i. That's simple enough. Let's calculate z squared. z squared is, well, it's 2 plus 3i squared, and we'll write that down like this. And then when we expand that out, we get the square of the first term plus the square of the second term, 3i squared will be minus 9, plus twice the product, which will be 12i, for a total of minus 5 plus 12i. How about z plus 2w? Well, z is equal to 2 plus 3i. And we have to add 2 times w, which is minus 1 plus 2i. OK, so it's convenient to think about the real part and the imaginary part sort of separately. So the real part, well, there's a 2 contributing there and a minus 2 contributing there. So we're going to get a 0 for the real part. And the imaginary part, there's a 3i here and plus 4i for a total of 7i. And of course, we can just write, write that more succinctly as 7i. How about z times w plus 3? Well, z is 2 plus 3i. And what is w plus 3? Well, we can just add 3 immediately to it. Adding 3 makes it 2 plus 2i. And then to expand something like this out, we use the usual distributive law. So there's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And let me also now do this one here, this product of 3i times 2i for a total of 6i squared, or minus 6. So I'm going to put minus 6. And then the mixed terms, there's going to be a 2 times a 2i and a 3i times 2. So 2 times 2i is 4i. And 3i times 2 is 6i for a total of 10i. Altogether, minus 2 plus 10i. How about z over w? Well, z is 2 plus 3i, and w is minus 1 plus 2i. And I'm going to simplify that by multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom, the w. So let me remind you that there's the complex number w, which happens to be minus 1 plus 2i. Now its complex conjugate is the reflection of it in the x-axis. It's going to be down here. So this is w bar, which is minus 1 minus 2i. That's what you get when you 
negate the coefficient of the i. So we're going to rewrite this by multiplying top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Now that's minus 1 minus 2i and minus 1 minus 2i. And what do we get when we do that? Well, let's do the bottom first. Then you can see why we're doing that. Okay, when we multiply this times its complex conjugate, we get a purely real number. There's no more imaginary part. In fact, we get what I call the quadrants of the complex number, sometimes called the square of the modulus. So we get, it's a difference of squares, so we get minus 1 times minus 1, so that'll be 1. And we get 2i times 2i with the minus sign, so that's minus 2i squared, or plus 4. And the intermediate terms cancel because it's a difference of squares. In the numerator, well, we're going to get, let's see, 2 times minus 1 is minus 1. The 3i times minus 2i will be minus 6i squared, for a total of plus 6. So minus 2 plus 6 is 4. It's the real part of the numerator. And the imaginary part, 2 times minus 2 is minus 4i. 3i times minus 1 is minus 3i. So I guess that's minus 7i. Altogether, we get 4 minus 7i over 5, which we could rewrite as 4 fifths minus 7 fifths i. So we've got some answers here. There's 3z. There was z squared. There is z plus 2w. z times w plus 3 is this one here. And the ratio z over w is this one here, and I'll leave you to calculate W over Z.